Hello, warriors, and welcome to another episode with me, Susie Pettit, your certified life and wellness coach. I am thrilled and a little embarrassed to be introducing the guest today. Um, thrilled because of who she is, which I will get to her bio in a second. A little embarrassed because I have not had anyone on the show ever. We're over 250 something episodes that to talk and to speak about the largest organ we have, our skin. I'm really fascinated by it. I think I had the thought that it was all vanity and 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 anyhow, I'm thrilled that this wonderful aesthetician reached out to me to have a talk about wellness and our skin and all the juicy stuff we get into in this conversation. And I am thrilled to bring this to you today. So if you have noticed the oversight in my wellness coaching that I have not addressed our skincare as part of our wellness, then yeah, I, you know, good example, reach out to me. I'm here for you. <laughs> Tell me these things. I am open to feedback. <laughs> and yay, let us join together to welcome our guest, Natalie Bevan. She has been a master esthetician for 20 years and has seen the struggle women go through with their skin. She has worked from anything from acne to aging to rosacea and all the in-betweens. She educates women about their skin and teaching them how they themselves can understand their skin instead of looking externally, again, internally, that's a lot of the messaging on this show, so that we better understand ourselves and the issues we're having with it, so then we can become an advocate for themselves and for ourselves. So let's go warriors and let's welcome Natalie to this show. All right, and welcome Natalie to the Love Your Life show. Hi, happy to be here. I am so thrilled to have you on the show. I, I said briefly in the introduction how, um, you know, I always get so excited for the guests and awesomeness. And I, I also shared how I'm I'm having this sort of aha moment with myself and a bit of um, embarrassment or just a noticing a mindset gap. I started my whole life coaching business as a wellness coach. And I talk about the five pillars of wellness and I have over 250 episodes of the show and I've never had anyone on the show before talking about skincare and our biggest organ. And I am just so thrilled that you reached out and that I am able to, to dive into this. Um, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm excited. I'm, I'm honored to be your first person about talking about skin. I'm, I'm so excited. So could you, could you speak a little, um, to sort of skincare and how our skin is part of our overall wellness, not just like a vanity yeah. metric. Yes, exactly. And so many of us just see it as an aesthetic purpose, like you said, the vanity and just kind of how does my skin look? But really, like you said, just previously as well, it is our largest organ. It is an organ of our body. And we really do take so much time taking care of all the other organs. And we're very conscious of it. But skin, because we think it is just aesthetic, we don't really pay a lot of attention to it other than when it doesn't look how we want it to look. Mm. And so it's really important to realize if you want healthy skin, then you've got to change your mindset and turn it to, it is an organ. This is how we're going to take care of it so it can be healthy. So it can do its functions that it's supposed to do. Like all organs have functions. Our skin is no different. And so if it's not healthy, it can't perform the functions properly. So that's it kind of is all intertwined as far as the health and how your skin looks. Yeah. And I just, I love, like, even as you're talking, I'm like, gosh, Susie, it's like so a mindset thing in that sometimes I know how myself and when I talk to other people, we have this thought, which is mindset that like, it's sort of out of our control. Like, why is my skin looking dull? Or why do I have acne? Or why are I, why am I getting these, like that sort of confusion that I know yeah. if I take it to another area of a woman's life. Like, why do we keep having conflict in our marriage over this? Or why do I keep, you know, why am I having disrupted sleep? I can see how that's mindset, but I never <laughs> thought of that. Like I, I definitely have the sense of this sort of like removed piece of me, like with my skincare, it's like, it just yes. is what it is. Um, so thank yeah. you. And, that, and that's very common to kind of separate it, right. To separate it from our bodies and separate it from what's going on in ourselves. And a big aha moment for people is when I talk to them about like your skin is connected even to your emotions and how you're feeling. And they're like, sure, sure. But then I'm like, 
when you are very stressed and you get a zit, what, like, what is the correlation other than your body is very connected to emotions and how you're feeling. And so your skin, it's a reflection of what's happening on the inside. And that can be uh, physically and mentally and emotionally as well. Mm. Yeah. So can you speak a bit to that about how, you know, what we're doing in our everyday life, maybe with eating or, and stress or sleep can affect our skin? Yeah, it totally can. Um, I actually have a resource that talks about this and it kind of goes through a lot of things that you can just incorporate in your day. And they're simple things, simple things that you're already doing. And a lot of them um, are things that you wouldn't think were related to skin. Like uh, one of them is just talking about breathing and how to breathe and just kind of relax your body and put your body in a state of kind of the calm state instead of, you know, how you're breathing. If you're breathing short, you know, um, short little breaths that you're telling your body you're panicked and you're stressed. But Mm -hmm. if you kind of calm it down and breathe deep and full into your belly, and that just kind of changes your brain, it gives your brain the different signals, and then it calms you down and it reflects on your skin. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to, to take care of yourself fully and, and make sure that you're doing all of these things to take care of your skin. And you mentioned diet, diet's so important for your skin as well. Your skin's one of the last organs to receive a lot of nutrients. So if you're not getting enough um, nutrients for your body, you're definitely not getting enough for your skin, especially. Mm. Mm. So no matter your eating style, make sure you're getting every kind of macronutrients, I guess, that you need for your body. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting to think of in, in terms of like, you know, protein and veggies and and all of those kind of things affecting our, our skin. But that, yes, a lot of my listeners are moms and I know that we can see that in our kids. Like if they're going to the convenience store and getting the six pack of weird donuts and eating, you know, we're like, well, of course <laughs> yeah. you're. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so with us, what do you see some of the main factors being that cause maybe the lack of vibrant vibrant skin or breakouts and acne um, with our diet? So um, it really, it's very individual. And so if something individually triggers you and your, like if you have acne or rosacea, or something like that, that, you know, um, you can kind of trail it back to what, what you've eaten that has caused that flare up. Mm. But overall, I just really recommend a full diet. So you're going to get lots of fruits and vegetables. Your skin loves fruits and vegetables for two reasons. You're getting all those vitamins and minerals that your skin needs Mm. and to help, um, boost the collagen and elastin and help all of the cells in the skin. But then also they provide a really good amount of fiber for your body. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that your skin is, is a detoxifying organ. So if you're not taking, if you're not passing things through, if you don't have enough fiber to have, you know, your bowels do the job, then the load on your skin is heavier. And so it will come Mm -hmm. out in acne and rashes and irritations and a lot of different things. So really get the fruits and vegetables, of course, Mm want to make sure you're getting your protein and your water. And because your body, that is what your body is made up of is protein and water. Water. Your cells are protein, your cells are water. So you've got to make sure you're getting enough water. And then also, no matter what your eating style is, get your protein in and get a good clean source of protein so that you can have that those building blocks for your skin. And then the last thing I always recommend that I know people Um, have been afraid of in the past is fats. You need Mm. good fats for your body. You need good fats for your skin so that it can function properly. So your fruits and vegetables, getting your fiber and your vitamins, your water, your protein, and your fats. Mm. Oh, I love it. And I did not know that. I didn't put that together with that your skin sort of gets toxins out of your body if your gut isn't doing it. So one, we can sort of address that by not bringing the toxins in, but also, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I love that. I really appreciate that. Um, so that's great. And I guess, could you speak a little bit about the science? Cause I have a lot of listeners that are sort of 40 and over, and we are interested in our aging skin and how to best care for our aging skin. Uh, and it, it just came to my mind cause you mentioned collagen. Could you dive a bit into the science behind healthy, healthy aging and skin? Um, healthy aging and skin, I think when my view is you go back to healthy skin mm. and I, I think there's nothing wrong with aging. I think aging is beautiful. Not everybody gets to do it. We are, it's a privilege to age, mm. but I do think 
it's okay to try to age gracefully as well. And so it goes back to internal health, two parts. Internal health, you want to make sure you are getting all the nutrients that your body needs and so that your skin can really benefit from that. And then topically, you want to make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. Sunscreen is mm. huge when it comes to premature aging. And, and start as young as possible with the sunscreen. Always have a sunscreen on every day, no matter the weather. And then just really being kind to your skin and not, I think, your again, your mindset will change as you age and you might not like how you're looking, but I think you've got to flip that and, and look at yourself and appreciate the beauty that you have, like get your skin really healthy. And I always say, if you are in your fifties and you have beautiful, healthy skin, you're going to look better than somebody in their twenties who does not take care of their skin. And it's, and it looks unhealthy. And to me, it's much more beautiful to have that healthy skin no matter the age. So really change your, your view on it as you're looking for health, not to be 20. You don't want to be 20 mm -hmm. again. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go back there in real life anyway, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, I really like that too in terms of, of, of the mindset because I know back in my 20s, I used to be motivated a lot thinking externally with my weight and my exercise and how I want to look and how, and now I'm 51 and I'm much more like, okay, I'm going to do my strength training because that helps me with healthy bones. And I'm going to do this because it helps me, you know, sleep better. And I'm going to avoid alcohol because all those things. So just for listeners to be aware of sort of switching that paradigm from what do I look like externally and like how much foundation can I put on to cover the acne versus maybe inside out you know, what am I eating that is good for my organ and organ? Yeah. My skin? And that's the lasting is when you, I mean, of course you want really good topical products because they're going to make a great difference in your skin as well, but you've got it. You've got to start taking care of from the inside out as, as it's a two part, it's equally important, both sides. And so it's really important to do both internally yeah. and externally. And I, I want to get to that, the topical part, but I, I do think I think as listeners, and I know for myself, I'm always like eager to talk to someone like you. I'm like, give me the magic, you know, the magic, whatever. Like, is there a magic pill for my thoughts about my marriage? <laughs> or is there a magic, you know, cream that I can put on that'll suddenly, and, and, you know, yes, there are things that can help, but where we really have so much of the control is that internal work and drinking the water, having the protein, putting, you know, doing those yeah. things to sleep, that sort of stuff. Um, could you talk, you just mentioned sunscreen and that I am in Australia now and I am like I made well I'm also 51 these two things are like coming to a head when I turned 50 I was like every single day Susie Pettit you are going to put on sunscreen like I don't care if it's raining out I don't care if it's I just I grew up with, with for your bad habits like look the more oil we can put on under aluminum foil the better that was that was normal back then that it was, was very, very normal. normal then luckily I it's it is definitely shifting now with, with yeah. the new generation, but with us in terms of sunscreen, um, I guess I have two questions. One, like, could you as an expert really tell us and give us some, some motivation to put it on daily or, and how, what sort of your practices with that? And then two, I get in my head about the best kind of sunscreen and, and sort of, you mentioned about like toxins and, and all of that. So I get into like, should I use mineral or, or like what kind of sunscreen am I damaging my organ by putting on the chemical? And yes, help me out. <laughs> okay. Okay. We can do that. Um, as far as preventing premature aging. So 80 to 90% of premature aging comes from the sun. Mm. And a lot of that has happened in your early twenties, your like early teens, twenties, somewhere through there. And so as soon as you are aware of this is never too late to start, just put your sunscreen on and make sure, like you said, you don't know when or what day it a lot of times people think, well, I do use sunscreen every time I go to the beach, when mm -hmm. I'm at the pool, I'm so religious about it. But what they don't understand is it's a daily habit. It is every single day. And even if it's overcast or rainy or snowing, it's still really important to get your sunscreen on because if there is enough light to see like from the sun, 
you're getting the rays from the sun. So you really want to make sure that you are putting a sunscreen on every single day. And that is going to be your biggest factor in preventing premature aging. Mm. And then as, as, as that goes with that as well, is if you are prone to pigmentation or melasma or sunspots or anything like that, got to put your sunscreen on to protect it because that can be triggered so, so easily. Um, and then going into actual sunscreens, you've got two kinds. You've got your physical and you've got your chemical. Like you said, the mineral ones are usually the physical one, a titanium oxide and stuff like that. Those are going to, what they're going to do is they're going to go on your skin and they're going to reflect the sun's rays. So that's kind of how they work. They do absorb in a, a little bit, but they mostly just reflect the sun's rays. The only downside to those is, well, I guess there's two. If you are, um, touching your face or you know anything that you put on your face afterward is going to move it so it doesn't absorb into the skin and so it can be moved easily and then if you are a darker skin toned person then you're going to get that white cast mm. on your skin mm -hmm. so then you'd want to go for the chemical and the chemical one is great um just what it does is it actually absorbs the the sun's rays and breaks them down so that's how they both work. And when you're looking for sunscreens, just try to get the least amount of preservatives and stuff like that that's in them. But you do, it is beneficial to have a sunscreen for sure daily. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And so you said, you know, put it on, even if the sun is like not out, all of that. Do you reapply it? Like what is yes. your, I mean, at the beach, yeah. I definitely do, but in a day, yeah. like what is, what would you recommend? Yeah, every two hours reapply it. Oh and you can my do God, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And and even we're we're running into a new issue when we're talking about UV damage is from blue screens. So your iPads, your computers, your your iPhones, what? like all of that. Yeah, it's new studies coming out and the, the oh, blue man. rays from that go deeper than the aging rays from the sun. So it, it, yeah, wear your sunscreen every day. And I know it, it's definitely an adjustment and it's annoying. I get that a hundred percent. I get that. Yeah. But to have the most protection, you do want to reapply every couple of hours. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to get another, <laughs> I have like one in my bathroom that I just have made part of my morning routine and I will get one perfect. now and I'll put it in the bathroom because I pee all the time. So I will just it's perfect. Perfect. get in the habit. And it's really it's really easy, actually, like even if you have a full face of makeup, what you can do is make sure your hands are clean and then you're going to put some in your hand, rub it together really good. And then you're just going to pat it all over your skin uh, and make sure, of course, you get everywhere. Mm -hmm. But then you're not moving your makeup. You still have your makeup on and then you're getting the sunscreen. So it's an easy way to do it. But it is an adjustment. I, I will give you that. It is an adjustment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's really helpful. I, I appreciate that. So what what? Um, I want to get into skincare routine, but since we're talking about sun damage and you're, you know, I just shared my age and how I have had sun damage. What are, are there things that help with sun damage, like treatments? Part of what drew me to having you as a guest on the show is you said you take the confusion out of it. And I get so confused. Like I get a thought in my head. I'm like, maybe I should get a facial. And then I look and I'm like, what kind of facial? What do I need? And like, oh, do I need micro? Duh, duh. Like, I don't even, you know, so yeah. like, what? What? <laughs> help me. It is, it can be completely confusing. And if you're not, if you have, you know, if you're not in the industry and you're not a regular person to get facials, it is very overwhelming. And, and like you said, like, well, what do I need? I mean. This says it's going to help with this. And this says it's going to help with this. What I always recommend for that is, I, I mean, if you're looking for products and wanting to take care of your skin that I do virtual consultations and, and I can help you virtually. But mm -hmm. if you're wanting to go in to see an esthetician and get a treatment done, which is always lovely, make sure what I would do is just go in for a facial, just a basic facial. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like finding the right doctor or the right dentist or the right hairstyle, right? You want to make sure that your personality is jive, that you trust what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so I would just start with a facial and then kind of, you know, vet it out and see how you feel and see how you feel about um, what the information they give you and all of that. And then you can kind of go from there and you can ask their opinion. What do you feel like I need? What would help my skin? These are my concerns. What should I do? And, and they'll be able to tell skin tone and skin texture and issues that you might be having or concerns. They'll be able to guide you to what is the best treatment for you because not all treatments are good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, 
there's a lot of contraindications for a lot of treatments. So you've really got to make sure you have a good esthetician that knows what they're doing and can mm -hmm. guide you through that. But that is my biggest thing is just start with a basic facial okay. and, and, and there should be no damage to your skin. They should be able to know what to do. And from there, you can kind of see, oh, I didn't feel super comfortable with this person. Mm -hmm. I'll try another one. So kind of give yeah. you a guide for there. <laughs> And I guess what I'm hearing is that it is that a facial is not um, it's and I don't mean to, I, I think people can make whatever decision they want to make, but it's not like Botox, like something that is more, you know, sort of for how we look, but that a facial or some of these other treatments might be more preventative and helpful for that organ in the same way that I go in and have my annual, you know, gynecological exam or I go in and I um, like I do things every day to care for my body that a facial is not just sort of that surface level, but that it would be something to add to our self, oh, not self-care, but for more sure. okay. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's a, I mean, if the facial is done correctly, like it's a full experience, you are more relaxed, you're calmer um, and kind of emotionally you're in a better state. And then your skin will come out more hydrated and more healthy and just given all of the nutrients and vitamins it needs. Okay. So yeah, facials are wonderful. Um, but I always say like, it's so important to match it with home care. If you're actually wanting some results and you want stuff, then about 80% is of your results are going to come from home care and mm -hmm. consistent home care, but the facials and the treatments and stuff are going to definitely just boost it up and, and do amazing things for your skin, depending on what you get. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And so that is a great segue into what do you recommend for someone who is confused like me? And is just like, ah, like what would, what would you say is yeah. the basic routine? Um, I always, the very basic, I mean, this is no add-ons. This is not treating anything special. This, but just the absolute basic to keep your skin in a healthy state. Um, I always recommend cleansing and you're going to cleanse once in the morning and twice at night. And the mm -hmm. reason I do that is because two times at night is you're getting off the first cleanse, you're getting off the dirt and the makeup and the debris and pollutants and toxins, anything from the air and anything that you've touched you know, if we're touching pets or our phones or like we touch so many things we are not aware of and it's leaving stuff on our skin. So the first cleanse is really getting all of that off. And the second cleanse, um, hopefully you have a great cleanser that's going to actually get into your pores and really clean out your pores, clean, do a deep clean on the skin and then really be able to, if it's a good one, deliver really good ingredients to your skin as well. So, so at you're night, you're going to do this. After another, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yep. Oh, oh, no, okay. you're fine. Yeah. So you'll cleanse, rinse, cleanse, rinse. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, yeah. it sounds like it's going to take a long time, but really you can do it in a couple of minutes. It wouldn't take very long. Um, and then in the morning, definitely cleanse your face. A lot of times we, people think, well, I, I cleansed at night and I just slept and I just washed my pillowcase okay. and I'm fine. Right. But because again, your skin is a detoxifying organ. So through mm -hmm. the night, when we think everything's resting, that's when our body's the most uh, working the hardest, right? And so it's detoxifying. And so you don't want to get up and start piling stuff on your face and mm. still have anything that your body was trying to get rid of because it, it can reabsorb it again as well. So just right. make sure you cleanse in the morning and then two cleanses at night. Then the next thing is a moisturizer. Make sure you're always moisturizing every morning and night, no matter if you're oily or anything like that. And then you want it during the day, a sunscreen. And then depending on your skin and your concerns and what you're after, you're going to do an exfoliator and it's going to be about one to two times a week. Again, depending on where you're at and what you're dealing mm -hmm. with. So cleanse, exfoliate, moisturize, and sunscreen. Okay. That's yeah, the very yeah. basic. Well, it is basic and I, and that would not take too long. So I really, no, I did just see one of your Instagrams where you said, with moisturizer at night to put it on and then wait a bit before you get in bed. So you don't just put it all over your pillowcase. I just wanted to mention that to listen yeah. because I was like, yeah. oh, good point, Natalie. Yes, because you're 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 spending all this money. You want these results. Yeah. And then so many times we're like, it's late. Just hurry, wash your face, throw it on and you go right to bed. Yeah, you're so like, look. Time to absorb in and you're just rubbing it all over your pillow. So my pillow is wrinkle free. Like yeah. <laughs> beautiful pillowcase. <laughs> Yeah. So what are your recommendations in terms that you just mentioned? Like we spend money on these products. Like 
what are your recommendations for products or ingredients or, or how would we start there? Because that's confusing to me too. It is very confusing. And that's one thing that I do for women. Like I will virtually cons uh, do a consultation with you and I deep dive into your skin and, and mm -hmm. it's very tailored to you. It's not because, you know, I'm not going to tailor yours to anti-aging or somebody else's to acne, like it, and then give them this cookie cutter thing. It's very individual, every single mm -hmm. product. I will pick out very specifically and because of the ingredients in each product, I will pick them and make sure that they're going to work together and work for your skin so that you get mm -hmm. the best results. And so it can be very overwhelming. And so when you are looking to get a skincare regimen, I would recommend getting some professional help with that because it's, it's, I mean, I find people all the time, I mean, before I became an esthetician, I, I was struggling with acne. And so when I would walk into a store of any type of store, even, even the grocery store, and you go down to the aisles and you'd see something that said acne, I would just grab it and buy it because I was like, well, it says acne and I have acne, so it should work. Right. right. But, but it, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so it is very, very hard to find what is going to work for your skin unless you have some help with it and somebody who's going to know the ingredients and what the ingredient is going to do on your skin and what you should avoid, because there's a lot of things that, you know, different skin type, different skin tone, different issues you need mm. to avoid certain things. So yeah. it, it's not a straightforward answer on that, but yeah, I would definitely get, um, get some professional help with that. Right. So a place to start, I will put all your links in the show notes for sure to reach out to you because that consult sounds awesome. Um, if someone is not in the financial position to do that, are there certain things like ingredients, certainly for someone who's over 40, like certain things you would look for in um, our products? Um, generally, as you go into, as you're aging and you're wanting something, your skin gets a little drier. So you're wanting something with more moisturizer in it. So just try to find a little bit thicker. But the one thing I always recommend is don't pick things with um, mineral oils and petroleums, and they're going to cause a little bit more problems for you. Okay. Stay away from anything with fragrances in it make sure there's no synthetic fragrances. And then the, the one thing that for everybody, uh, make sure it says non-comedogenic or it'll say non-clogging, meaning it's not going to cause issues with your skin. It's not going to clog up your pores, cause blackheads, melia, uh, pustules, okay. papules, anything like that. So I would, those three things is what okay. I would say. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm like, I want to talk to my listeners. I'm like, you got it, guys. I think you gave us so much good information here. I, I know that I'm going to figure, I'm going to Google. I'm, I mean, I'm in Australia. So I'm like, how do I get a facial? Um, I guess that's what I would like. I'm looking for someone who is, who is, I'm not even sure if they have the same certification that you have, like an esthetician. I think they do. So I would be looking at like estheticians in my area and just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of maybe see I mean really it's 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 just like going to a hairstylist if you don't have a recommendation from somebody else then you're gonna have to just kind of kind of date them is what you're doing you're gonna go right. this one and see and then this yeah. one and oh I like this one better or you know perfect <laughs> it is a little bit reach, trickier. then we reach out to you for our consult and then yeah, yeah and in the meantime put sunblock on <laughs> yes perfect yeah <laughs> <Very sunblock. laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Do you think there's any, like any last thing that you think we've left out or? I think we've covered everything. I don't know if they, if they want some more information, they can find me and ask me questions and I'm happy to help. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You've helped me so much. I feel very inspired. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you so much.